it is. Do you find, I mean, having come to this part, you know, the year after playing Hamlet, I mean, do you feel that there are strong parallels? I mean, it's very interesting. It's a similar situation. Here's someone wrestling with, I don't know, the morality, the ethics, or even the practicality of killing a king. And, and in the case of Brutus and Caesar, I mean, they're, they're kind of friends, too. Right? Well, and that's a big part of it, is that uh, Brutus goes is at great lengths to let us know that yeah. he's a great friend of Caesar. Yeah. So it's... It, 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 it's, it's, it's more difficult for him to commit the act than it is for any of the other conspirators. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think, I mean, I think that's a big part of what the play is about. Yeah. You know, in the Granville Barker essay, he talks about, Granville Barker wrote a whole, uh, 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 wrote essays on all of uh, Shakespeare's plays, I yeah. think. And they're all really interesting essays. The one on Hamlet is, is fantastic. It's, yeah. it's super. But the, but the one on uh, uh, Caesar, he tries to sort of distill the the theme of the play and he he says sort of he was quite a brilliant man and he just says the theme of Julius Caesar is if you think you can avoid evil by committing evil do it and watch what happens <laughs> yeah you know yeah, which yeah. is which is actually in it, that's very much what happens yeah. in the in the plot yeah. Yeah. you know be, that in this kind of an attempt to to eradicate the problem, they create a, um, another yeah. much bigger problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I won't ruin it for you by no, telling no. you what the problem is, because there are a, a number of things that happen in the later part of the play that are quite interesting, yeah. and that and that a, a lot of people don't know, as opposed sure. to the assassination of Caesar, which is, yeah. as you say, is very well. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I would agree that the play itself is not, it's such a, it, it, it evokes one of the most profound questions of our time, and of any mm -hmm. time for that matter. Like, I was thinking this as I was watching the news last night in the recent, um, uh, coming to light, something that most of us kind of knew anyway, or s suspected that the torture was used in the last yeah. number of years in the latest um, uh, administration, uh, not the present administration, but the latest one. Um, uh, in the United States, and that in, in that question of uh, when, y you know, how we always think of violence as being something as a means to an end, and that but violence always has remarkable outcome. I mean, th no matter what side you're on, you know, like forget evil dictatorships or something or terrorism. Talk about, you know, even uh, just societies, uh, societies that base themselves in democracy. They still end up doing. You know, perpetrating action which ultimately has consequences, dropping the bomb, mm. you know, yeah. ultimately maybe saving the world or, or bringing about the end of a war, but at the same time, the repercussions of that, we, yeah. we still carry to this day, including just the personal, the guilt. I think that this play is, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a political play per se, it is yeah. a personal play. It's the personal ramifications. Yeah, of that, it's know? certainly not a political play in the way that George Bernard Shaw's plays, right. political plays, are political right. plays, in which arguments are, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're very much theater of intellect. Julius Caesar is not theater of intellect. Julius Caesar is theater of passion and emotion, yeah. and that's what drives the play: is the emotional lives of the sure. character. It's sometimes easy to forget that, yeah. uh, particularly if you if you read the play in a kind of scholastic way, right. because there's lots of things to attach yourselves to. The, the, the you know the central figures, the the historic figures of Caesar himself and of Brutus and of Mark Antony. You can sort of get fall in love with the history of it and forget that the play is is very much about human beings. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean when talking about um, you know, Brutus on the way to Hamlet and Mackers. Mackers, uh, sorry, b being Macbeth. Uh, <laughs> Actors are superstitious. Yeah. We don't like to say the okay. name Macbeth. We don't like to say the, the don't that name. Don't tell Comfior that we spoke <laughs> yeah. it in this building. But of course, you know, when you're doing it, you have to say it all the time. Yeah, but of course. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> that Brutus is, is, a, is a step on Shakespeare's journey to, you know, in his awesome journey to defining what the human being is right. and, and how the human mind works and how the right. ego works yeah. and how the human's perception of the world works and his perception of, his, it, of himself okay. or herself. Oh. So it, it's, I mean, it, it's not, as you say, it's not a political play in the sense that Shaw's plays it, in that it's a discussion of political ideas. But, it, it, but politics, of course, is the background. It's the, it's the thing that drives the play in that sense. Would it be, I mean, is it uh, out, outlandish to say that this might be the first political thriller in literature. Mm. You could say so. There's, a, so yeah. there's a ghost. Yeah, and one a thriller. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Surely. That's all, as well. The play, the play has a great deal of uh, metaphysics to it, and even the, you mm -hmm. know the mystical yeah. enters supernatural. Uh, yeah, and that, and I think that's something that's. Uh, 
again, timeless, you know, I mean... Well, what, what's that about? Yeah, any thoughts? Have, have you guys talked about, in rehearsal, have you talked about what the significance of those supernatural elements is, the prophecies, the soothsayer, the ghosts? I don't know if we talked about it as, uh, sort of in general, but when we specifically arrive at it, we just sort of, we've chosen to embrace it. He's talked about, uh, a bit about the, uh, the societal link to uh, ritual, Right. And to um, to that to, yeah to ritual yeah. Yeah. and to and to a kind of a, a kind of mysticism that pervaded you know Roman culture right. and that that is actually important to the way these characters work right. that 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 it's in it's in their minds right. all the time yeah. that it's it's part of their culture yeah. so that's important to the play I guess when you talk about the politics of it really what it is is that the play centers itself around. You know, as you said, like the most fundamental political question of Western civilization. You know, yeah. should they have killed Caesar yes. or should they not have killed Caesar? Which, of course, is a question. It's an unanswerable question yeah. that has never been answered and yeah. has always we been face debated. It day day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we faced it, I suppose, fairly recently. Was it was it a good or bad thing? Was it a wise or foolish thing to topple Saddam Hussein? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when, you know, and that's what I sort of I sort of brushed apart. I should probably clarify that point. You know, this question of torture. Yeah. I mean, without question, I think most of us fall on the line of saying that terrorists and terrorism is somehow, uh, is certainly anti-humanity. Yeah. But at the same time, do we as moral beings, what, where, do we, where do we sit in that? Yeah. You know, and do the means justify the ends? And what does that mean in restoration? Even if we stop torture now, there will be the repercussions of knowing that we as a society, on some level, qualified it. On some level, uh, either turned our back or we're, we're incapable, right. you know? And uh, and who? Why didn't we stop it? Who didn't stop it? Who, did someone try to stop it? And were they stopped? You know, like yeah. these. Yeah. Now, in, um, I guess I'm kind of getting back to a little bit of plot here. But in the play, of course, you guys are are, are on opposite sides of the fence. You are you are Caesar's. Or are we? <laughs> well, oh, yeah. okay. No, are you? No, I'm just. <laughs> um, you, you you know, you're Caesar's friend who becomes his one of his murderers, um, and you are you are the person who. Turns the tide. I don't think it's giving too much away to say that you yeah. have the, uh, the the other famous uh, few words in that play, mm -hmm. friends, Romans, countrymen. Um, tell us a bit about Mark Antony and like what he, his role in this play for people who don't know it exactly. Well, until the 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 funeral uh, scene, the funeral oration, if you will, um, we. We see, we see very little of me, and we also, for that matter, hear very little of me. I think mm -hmm. a, a total of, I don't know what it is, maybe 12 lines or something, 12 lines or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, I mean, that's dramaturgically a kind of a brilliant choice anyway. But I think it's also to be said that I'm a, not only a follower, a devout follower of Caesar, but a beloved friend. I'm younger. Uh, my ambitions are very different. I'm a, an athlete and a party animal, if, yeah. to put it crudely. And I don't think, what's interesting is I'm also beloved of... Brutus. Yeah. I and I don't think that respect in terms of who the man is ever really changes, even though I, see, you know, I, I, I turn about to uh, to seek a certain kind of justice for the murder of Caesar, and that's why I mean. That, that that speech, for example, I, I've, I I didn't read it as a speech. It's a dialogue. It's a mm. dialogue with Rome, mm. and it also never has. I, I, I know the director feels this way, and uh, it's ultimately most interesting for me to to at least to attempt to play it this way. It never has a. It maybe ha, it may hasn't it maybe has an end goal, mm. but the man has no idea how he's going to get there, yeah. and even whether he's going to dare to go for that goal. You know, he, uh, I walk into um, a very heated crowd, which is very much, in many ways, on the side of the conspirators. And all I know is that a man I loved and who had a lot to recommend to himself and deserves a worthy legacy has been butchered. Mm. And that the people need to see that for what that is. Right. I think that's really where it starts. And then so the way I navigate myself through that, through that crowd is really a dialogue. I have to feel them out as much as they are you know, feel